good day. So now we're going to have a new topic which is integrating all of the previous topic in a way from uh, the midterm lectures. So for now, we're going to have capacitance, specifically the capacitors which are the physical devices and we will be placing them in circuits. Okay. So I think this will be in a way a revisiting of the previous topic that you had from general or I mean your physics in junior high. So that would be the series and the parallel circuits. So for this topic's objective, so we're going to learn how to illustrate first and foremost uh, the structure of circuits so series and parallel circuits that's what that's the kind of circuits we're going to learn then integrate capacitance so from the previous topic that we have learned okay the integration of uh, the use of capacitors on series and parallel circuits then lastly uh, we're going to compute so of course that's the ultimate goal to understand conceptually and then apply it mathematically so we're going to look for the total capacitance and individual capacitance then we have uh, the voltage drops and charge distributions okay so uh, let's take a look here at my uh, drawing no so this is an example of a simple circuit okay which is a closed one okay closed because first i didn't place a switch there but the loop will go um actually on this direction going from positive to negative Okay, so always remember the positive is the longer side, the negative is the shorter side. Okay, so the energy will flow this direction. Or I mean the charge will flow in this direction, which will be pushed by the energy. It is of course joules per charge is voltage. Alright. So I hope you still remember those. Then this is the symbol for voltage. This one uh, just one short and one long line. So the long line indicates positive charge, the short uh, like indicates the negative side. Then for capacitors, uh, these uh, are symbolized by two parallel lines that have equal lengths. Okay, so sometimes you place something like here, which indicates that it can be placed on. Uh, what do you call this? A circuit. Then of course a wire. It's just a line. Okay, so that's the indication for the placement of where current should flow. Okay. By the way, current. Uh, how about we just take a look on the next slide? Okay. So current is. Or what flows on an electrical circuits okay so that's basically what electricity is okay so circuits are composed of electrical components so i have shown you some here so we have capacitors and battery for this one but of course we're going to have resistors diodes and etc on the future lectures that we're going to have okay so as you can see we already have our formula here but we're going to expand on that later on all right so now we have series and parallel connection so this is what it looks like the series connection here so i'm going to name this capacitor c1 and this capacitor C2 
and this capacitor C. Then this voltage, I mean this circuit, I mean uh, I'm going to name this capacitor C1 of course, then we have C2 here and C3 here. Alright, so this is a parallel circuit or a parallel connection. So let's go back here on the series one and take a look at the definition. So according to here, uh, series connections is where all capacitors are connected with a single wire. Okay, so as you can see, there's just single continuous wire that goes through all of the capacitors. Okay, so the consequence of that, you need to remember, current flows only on one direction. Okay, so in the case that would be like this. Just follow the direction from positive to negative. So this is your positive side. This is your negative side. Okay, so something like this. Alright. Then after that, you have to remember that their equivalent capacitance is less than the individual capacitance of each capacitor. Which look something like this. Okay. Then, given this premise, all capacitors in series connection have the same charge. Alright, so this is the consequence of having just a single wire or single current. Okay, so the charge that they will be receiving will be equal. So what would be distributed? That What would happen is that their potential difference will vary. Okay, so you have to add those. So for example, the voltage that is received by C1 will be different from the voltage received by C2. So you can just rename this capacitor having a voltage of D1, okay, which we will be showing later. Okay, then let's have the parallel. So remember those differences, okay? For the parallel connection, we have capacitors that are connected with individual wire. So each capacitor will be having one circuit for each, okay? So if we're going to follow the flow, so this will be having something like this, okay? Then another one for this one, then another one for this one, okay? So they are individual, uh, wires for each of the capacitors. So uh, the consequence of that will be the sum of, I mean the total capacitance would be the sum of the individual capacitance which is different from the series connection as you can see here on the equation that we have at the bottom. Okay, so another premise that you have to remember is that capacitors in by the way, this is parallel, okay? This is parallel. Oh, let me correct that. Alright. So, same voltage. Okay. So, remember that. And then finally, the total charge in this kind of circuit is the sum of the individual charge. Okay, so uh, for this one, you have to remember the equation. Yeah, let's go back here. P equal to Q over V, which will be greatly used uh, for over the course of this discussion. All right. So, how about we have some examples all right so for our first example uh, let's assign values for each of this given so we have uh, we're going to name this v sub d for total voltage okay so for our given we have i will just write here below uh, the illustration 
So we're going to learn first about the series connection. So we have C1. So I'm just going to give them. Uh, let's have the prime numbers. Okay, the first three primes. So it would be easy for us. So we have uh, for the units. Let's use micro microfarads. Okay. Then for our C2, we have three microfarads. Then for our C3, have five microfarads. And then for the total voltage, we have let's say 30 volts. Okay, for our required, we're tasked to look for first the total capacitance. Okay. So remember that the total capacitance in a series connection is written as 1 over CQ. So don't forget, finally, if you're solving, that you're going to reciprocate it. Okay? Then, of course, we're going to look for uh, the total charge uh, that you're going to have since this is a series connection you just remember that okay uh, just remember that I'm going to give this tip on you already but we're going to learn about it more when we discuss resistance and Ohm's law okay that charge is directly proportional to circuits okay. or I mean current current sorry so current is the flow, actually, flow charge. That's how we define current. Okay. So since we we have one single wire that's running through, so that means you only have a single current. It's running all through the three capacitors. Okay. So that means you're going to have single bulk of charge that will be received by all. Okay. So that would be the next. Uh, given that you're going, I mean, next record that you're going to look for, and then finally, you're going to look for since uh, you have same charges for all, so you're going to have voltage differences, okay, or potential differences for each. So that would be voltage drops, which will be named V1, V2, and V3. Okay, so this will be. Uh, what we are going to look for. So I have here my decimals ready so we can solve for all of them. So for the first equation, we're going to utilize 1 over C sub EQ is equal to. So we have three capacitors here. So we're just going to use 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. Okay? Then, of course, for total charge, that would be originating from C is equal to, so this is total charge, uh, Q total over V total. So since what we're looking for is Q, so we're going to have total charge will be total capacitance multiplied by the total voltage. Alright, so let's have a solution. So for the first one, we have 1 over C sub EQ equal to 1 over 2 microfarads plus 1 over 3 microfarads plus 1 over 4 mi 5 I mean microfarads. Okay. So what you can do is you add this first and then you find the reciprocal after. Okay, so that would be 1 over C sub EQ is equal to, so we input it here, 1 half, oops, oh, we repeat it, so we have 1 half, plus 1 third, plus one-fifth right so that would be 
1.0333 microfarads then you reciprocate it so that would be uh, 1 over right 1 over this one there so our total capacitance is equal to 0 0.97 or 9677 so let's retain as much decimal places as possible okay so this is what you're going to need the reciprocal okay or you can just write c sub eq so it's how you go you can differentiate uh what do you call this series from from parallel okay actually either works as long as you remember the difference when they are defined okay so now that we have found this one we can now look for or oh, let's box final answer let's see right there so let's find this one okay which is equal to so just copy this then of course don't forget to convert so that would be 0 0.9677 times 10 raised to negative 6 farads multiplied by here which is given so here 30 volts Okay, so our unit for this one will be Coulombs, okay? So, what would be our answer? So, we have this one Multiplied by 30 There so Our answer is 29.031 So, our, our total charge For this particular circuit 29.031 uh, uh, Don't forget this one. So I think this will be just uh, 10 raised to negative 6. You're just going to write it. There. Oh, negative 5. Uh, because we moved the decimal place. If it, if it will remain like this, it will just still be 10 raised to negative 6. Then... You can just rewrite it as 29.031 microcoulombs, which of course looks neater. Alright, so in this case, uh, I highly suggest that you utilize prefixes because the answers will be really, I mean the solutions will be really, really long. Really long. Which... I will be showing you right now so we're going to look for the voltages okay so since we're going to distribute the voltage uh, to if the capacitor so what you're going to utilize would be this formula okay which is what we did already earlier but in this case you're going to utilize uh, each of the capacitors so you're going to have a v1 for c1 then you're going to use the total charge that you have obtained you got that so in this case this will be rewritten as v1 or well, you just derive it okay so this will become 2t over c1 okay then for V2, it will be the same. So that would be QT over C2. Then for V3, that would be QT over C3. So you just substitute. So we have three individual uh, values for voltages. So we have 29. 0 0.031 microcoulombs over uh, what's our 
for this one 2 microfarads correct and for this one we have 29.031 microcoulombs divided by 2 mic 3 microfarads then lastly we have 29.031 microcoulombs divided by 5 microfarads so this one will show you that this is a series connection okay so how about we solve for this so we would know so i'm going to utilize this instead okay so divided by 3 times 10 is the negative 6 uh, we use parenthesis because it's not displaying properly and this is 2 by the way not displaying well it is this negative 5 there so as you can see this is 41 point or you just copy you can just copy for 14 I mean 14.5155 if you cancel this that will be cancelled actually then you can just divide it as is or you can input everything else how about I'll just cancel them so we can just input the numbers either way works okay so the unit for this one will be volts okay, i'm going to show you uh this one instead so we're going to have 29.031 okay oops it's not writing properly 0, 31 uh, wait I'm just gonna type it divide by 3 there so we have 9.677 okay then we have finally uh, well, let's just copy this one then change it to 5 there so this will be 5.8062 so our units for this is volts so let's see if it's going to tally or it will be equal to 15 okay uh, let me just move this real thing one more time it's obstructing our solution <laughs> okay so let's go back here so let's add this three okay so we have our solutions here plus this one then lastly this one there so our answer is 29.9987 which is approximately 30 volts it matches our given so at this point you're already done okay so you can just box this not boxing well again then this three there That's it. We're going to have more examples when we meet. Or you can practice on your own, of course, by using the self-paced practice problem. So now we're going to have uh, the parallel circuits. Okay, so for our problem number two, how about we just use the same given from series so you can contrast the answers 
Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to have all of this or then there you go. Place it here. Then we erase this one because we have a different, uh, in a way, same record but of course different way of obtaining it. So we have total capacitance, okay, it is basically much easier compared to the series one. Then in this case, the voltage is already given, okay, so the individual voltage that they will be receiving will be the same as the voltage source you are familiar with you still remember having a classroom right or an ordinary christmas light if you remove one of the light bulbs the others if it's a high quality christmas light no the others will still light up okay, the reason for that is they are connected independently to the source so in that case uh, V sub D is already equal to V sub 1 is equal to V sub 2 equal to V sub 3 that 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 okay so we're not going to look for this anymore instead we're going to look for the charge uh, distribution so you're going to have of course the total charge okay and then you're going to have charges for each of the capacitors q2 and q3 okay so for our equation so we're going to utilize total capacitance is c1 plus c2 plus c3 and then you have p is equal to q over v then the derivation of that okay let's do that we don't need the cycle for this one, so our total capacitance would be 2 microfarads. Okay, 2 microfarads. 3 microfarads plus 5 microfarads. So this is 10. Okay, so that's easy. So now let's look for. The total charge which is already i mean the volt total voltage is already given so we just need to multiply this one is equal to uh 10 microfarad so that's 10 but oh, we're just going to place but well, let's just have 10 times 10 raised to negative 6 farads but you can just place the micro there okay, that's the trick to it Okay, then you have voltage which is 30. So the answer for this one would be 30 times 10 would be 300, correct? Times 10 raised to negative 6 coulombs is equal to 300 microcoulombs. Alright? there so next after that we can now look for each of the charges so for q1 you're going to have p1 total voltage okay which is uh, what's our c1 2 times 10 raised to negative 6 farads times 30 volts which is equal to something or we're going to solve it later I'm going to write everything else first we have C2 B is equal to uh, this is 3 right microfarads times the raised to negative 6 farads multiplied by 30 volts something or we're going to solve it later and lastly we have 
capacitance of P3, then we have Pt is equal to, this is 5, oops, this is 5 times 10 raised to negative 6 parads, equal to 30 volts, there. So we solve for each, so this is 2 times 10 is to negative 6 times 30 there so then for this one this will be p times 10 raised to negative 6 this one Not writing. <laughs> okay, uh, let's just copy this one. And we just place 3 here. There. And then for this one, let's have 5. There. And then we add this 3. So here, as you can notice, our answer or the total sum of this. So we can just write this as. 6 times 10 raised to negative 5 so this is coulombs or we can just write it as or like this or 60 micro coulombs okay then for this one this will be nine times 10 raised to negative 5 which is equal to 90 microcoulombs. Then lastly, this one will be 1.5 times 10 raised to negative 4, which is equal to 150 microcoulombs. So you can add them easier. Okay, so that would be 60 microcoulombs plus 90 microcoulombs. That's why every 50 microcoulombs is equal to 300. Which is of course same as 3 times 10 raised to negative 4. Right? So at this point, you have completed your solution. So next we're going to have a combination of series and parallel circuits or series and parallel connection in a single circuit all right then we can now proceed on self-paced practice problems